online that like in a way him throwing the line back in about the brave always die first. He's acknowledging that he has a point, but his way ain't the way. Next, I gotta do this. And if anybody was gonna do that attempt, it was gonna be Logan. And I think he wouldn't let anybody else go about that way. Be like, no, I'll I'll, I'll go down. Think about as how many the... times he died, like in previous wars. That's the thing. That's like I've been brave before, <laughs> and here Bob's still standing. Like, no, if I gotta go, this is this is it. I'm taking you out. <laughs> Nah, and we we now, we, we might question, as well Sam, before we continue this... it. Before we continue it, oh. I think we might as well just dive into this. Might as well get the intro done for for the for Go Team for JVS. It. So hello, hello, Team JVS, episode nine, <laughs> X Men ninety seven. We're already like in the middle of talking about this, so I'm like, you know, we might as well just get this out of the way so we can continue the conversation because there's no way we can just sit there and try to process it because then I'm going to be at a loss of words. We're going to get everything fresh off the mind. Um, of course, we're here with Ronan Unchained, Jedi Mike, Samuel, of course, who is the guy when it comes to this. He's not He's not even leading this because he doesn't know what to say. Look at that. He's confused. Look at him. It's the <laughs> but, time this happened. Yeah, I know. This is like one of the only shows that, that does this for him. And um, But we're excited to talk about this, <laughs> so we're going to continue with it. Mike, as you were. So, to answer your question, also, I guess this is a spoiler review, right? So, yes, why did uh, uh, Professor X stop? Well, first of all, he was supposed to hit his final form, his final move uh, in Mortal Kombat when you got the low bar, and he's like, okay, you got the finisher. He's about to give him that finisher. He's about to get into his signature move. And he said, you left me with no choice. So he wasn't just going to freeze him like you do in the Brian, Brian Zinger X-Men movies. No, I am taking you out, my friend, my old friend. And then... Cyclops, after already seeing Gene get into it with his son, you know, with the vision and everything, knowing that gold team are still need to deal with their stuff, whatever. I was like, I can't let you take out Magneto. We're going to need him, right? So I have to stop you, Professor X, which also leads to him being the more, not saying twisted leader in the comics, but going into a more conflicted type of leader, yes. which now going down to other iconic X-Men storylines. You know, especially when entities possess him and who he becomes. Oh. Not spoiler. Exactly. Right. Ronan knows what I'm talking about. Hey. Read the comics. Anyway, um, and then all of a sudden when Wolverine impaled him, and then he said, Listen, I've seen brave, you know, folks before, or whatever. Obviously, yeah, I've been in many wars before. Come on. It's like I have died before trying to be the brave one. Like, nah. I've seen many of my folks die. If anyone who can least survive is going to be me. Or if I have to go out, I'll be the one. So, and then he had to do something that nobody else would probably would have done. But he can. So he did it at the expense of the most, I want the most iconic Wolverine or X-Men steals of all time. Well, Magneto pulls the Amantium out of his uh, body. And um, yes, it's all Disney Plus fashion. Yeah, that final sh that final shot was giving Invincible episode one, season one. Yeah. So yes, but yes, the writing on this. Now people were complaining, saying that this is probably um, a lot of comic book moments here, like stills, <laughs> costumes, toys, also which we'll get into. But yes, yes, this was Easter egg allure, y'all. But they've was... been, but they, what the show's been doing this far is that it's. If you look back at the first episode, the first three, it's been laying the groundwork there. So there's no surprise that eventually Storm would go down this route with the costume. I mean, the fact that what happened in episode two, it was just like, well, that jacket's going to come around sooner or later. And then what's after the jacket? Um, I, I said it to you guys during it. I feel so bad for the live action team. I'm like, like... It's someone I think who I forgot who said it, but like for the films, the last films that you had to follow up was Dark Phoenix and the New Mutants, and that would have been an okay thing, uh, 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 standard wise. But now we got this that A is exceeding what the original series did for me and for a lot of people of my generation and people who watched it. But now, it's just like this is the gold standard, not just of characters, but writing, dialogue, the depth that it goes down to. Um, I think, yeah, man, I, I think, you know, you said about how Charles had to do the one thing that he probably contemplated. How many times do you think he probably contemplated doing this? It was like, no, I can't do that. A, it's A, morale, and B, it's my friend. It's like, see, there's another way. And it's just like desperate times, des desperate measures. And 
this episode also has one of my favorite lines where it's like, gods are ones who leave people behind who believe in them and whatnot. And I was just like, damn. Um, yeah, I, I, if you go back, and I mean, I, I caught it this time, but when you see Jubilee holding Roberto's card, it says Claremont Avenue, I believe, at the bottom, which is a little yes. shout out to Chris Claremont. Yes. Um, if you go back to the, the hangar in the, 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 the base, uh, you see a little motorcycle there in the bottom. Uh, and Mikey, if I'm not mistaken, that's a motorcycle from one of the Wolverine toys from back. One of the Wolverine the toys, which I had when I was six years old. I remember that specifically. Yes, I was like, there's, yeah, they added that in there. There's a lot, a lot in there. And again, if you miss it, you miss it. Oh, well, you'll still get a kick ass story, but there's a lot. It's it's the, the quality it's giving us, and then the rewatchability. Oh, you'll catch this. Oh, you'll catch that. Like, for example, a lot of people will be like, wow, what a shocking moment. But just like, wait a minute. That's from a page in the comic books. Verbatim. Literally out of it. Why not? Um, seeing Rogues and Roberto stands, it, it shocked me, but it didn't. It wasn't out of character. It wasn't out of character because how the predicament both of them were. Him coming out in that in this time period of these past eight weeks. And how much his family uh, um, showed their cards when it came to him being a mutant. Um, my heart went for Jubilee so bad. Because she said, if you're not going to stay for anybody else, stay here for me. And he just walked away. Um, Rogue still mourning uh, 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 Gambit. It's just <clears throat> next level. And, and, and I think one of my favorite frames of this series as far is Hank holding Trish's hand while she's in the bed. And she's still in the sentinel uh, uh, metamorphosis, which says a lot about how much he, 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 like, I think he does care for her and maybe had a crush on her and, like, still is clinging to hope that she can come back. And how much that hurt, how much that really hurt. So, fellas, you, yeah. I've given you time to process. To go, yes. go, go. You time to breathe, gave you some water, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah I, um, I'm going to say something. It, it probably isn't. I don't know if it's necessarily true. I might need to take some more time to think about it. But I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of shows and movies, animated and live action. But this may be not just one of the best comic book adaptations um, from a medium standpoint, but this this is the most comic accurate um, that I have, may have ever seen. Um, and yet it's the most pleasing, you know what I'm saying? Like, just because you make something comic accurate doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be pleasing. They found a way of making sure the narrative is still accurate to the source material while refining the story that was already foundationally laid in the nineties and continuing it to make it elevated, expansive and relatable um and emotional so it's like every single fan service thing that's in this it's not just fan service it's earned it's like they set building blocks to make sure like okay i didn't just put this here no there's blocks to level this up to this point the moment that we sit there and get this i lost <laughs> my crap and it didn't just use him like they worked together to utilize him and it's just like I just cannot comprehend how good this show is. Every single week, they find ways of elevating it, right? And, I mean, again, you guys talked about the whole Magneto moment. And at first, I was like, okay, well, maybe he's going to lobotomize him. There's no way he can, like, strip him of his powers. I never in my, never in my heart would have ever thought that Professor would have tried to kill him, to take him out because he didn't have any kind of idea. And it's like this level of control. And at the same exact time, he's in his head and said to them, like, look, man, I failed you guys. I wanted you guys to have a different life. I wanted you guys to have something that I was striving for. But my fear kept you guys in this solitude. And I felt like if I removed myself from you guys, you wouldn't go down this path. You would be able to have something for yourself. And he was fooling himself because he was like, as much as I'm talking about you, I'm right back in the same exact chair. I'm no longer on my two feet anymore. I'm no longer with my love anymore, technically. And it's just so freaking good, dude. Like, I didn't even know how how in the world was the 
you know, this guy going to do anything about like Magneto stripped the world from any kind of power. This man is literally using himself as a battery source effortlessly. So, yeah, man, I, I just I think the thing that I came out of this is realizing that this is at this point, unless they do something crazy for the last episode, um, this is to me the best uh, comic book adaptation anything that I've seen. Like, I'll, I'll say that respectfully. Um, it's just so accurate and it references so much, but yet they allow the medium to push forward. I guess that's the best way I can kind of put it without getting too sappy or emotional. Um, I feel like every single person this year has gotten emotional at one point in the series. Is that wrong? I, I cry. There's so many thumbnails I have of me just crying. I'm like, this fucking show is pulling no punches. Um, I'm, I'll interject. I think what you said is correct. Uh, Batman the Animated Series was always the gold standard for Batman stuff. <laughs> I think this is up there with it. I think this is up with it. And I, I think the old show was as well. But you could tell budget-wise, Batman was on another level. This one is like, hold my beer. Yeah, there's no limitations. They can use whatever they want to because it's underneath Marvel. It's, I, it's there's no limitation to what they could put in. If Daredevil, hypothetically speaking, showed up as a street level hero trying to save some folks, I wouldn't be surprised at this point. And I think we want that from Marvel. That's what we want. <laughs> we, we want Marvel to do that. And this is Marvel, but yeah, I'm gonna shut up. Sorry, busy. Go ahead. Yeah. I missed it. <laughs> Put a front center. There you go. Um, again, so I, I I'm just gonna kind of like put my all my thoughts on the table, kind of scramble it over here. Um, so every episode they have managed to just kind of overdo. I I just go over my expectations, if you will. Um, how many episodes we got left? One, right? One more. One. Yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm just curious on how they're gonna close this out. It's obvious we're getting more episodes. I don't know, like like the cliffhangers we've gotten on individual episodes, which some of these episodes feel like season finales in their own right, yep. considering how crazy and how, just how insane some of these episodes are. Again, like like I'm not even a, like I don't care about cameos often, but like when they happen, I'm gonna get excited. Seeing the Hulk, Quicksilver, seeing Spider Man, Captain America, these are moments that are insane. But in every individual episode that those cameos have appeared in those weren't the best moments of the episode and and it's really hard for an, a show to to do that where like like cameos are great so sometimes like the cameos will carry the episode which isn't the best thing uh, uh like i love the mandalorian i love the season two finale but at the end of the day luke skywalker was the best i love like that's the reason why i love that episode i mean the episode was great but luke was amazing but this this show is like having all these great great cameos happen and those aren't the best parts of the episode so it's like 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 that just says enough about the writing uh just some of these liners whether it's from storm or, or magneto like the dialogue is peak i don't i don't know what else to, to say i mean i'm at a loss of words half the time when they're saying or just spewing nonsense i mean i i a lot of shows will just spew nonsense this show's just spewing facts i mean everything that they're saying is just peace like it's put together so beautifully and in like, I, I just want to get like a whole book full of like amazing quotes from this season alone, just because they've did, they've done such a phenomenal job writing the script. And I don't, I don't even know. I feel like I'm just rambling at this point, but it's just, I, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to, I know they're going to manage to top this episode, but I just don't know how they'll, they're going to do it in episode 10. I'm just kind of, my brain's fucked up. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> Mind your weather, sister, and weather your mind. Weather See, your like, mind. are you fucking kidding me, dude? Like, that's, I don't, I don't know. I'll, can I say this? Because I, I, I saw this after, because I'm, I'm a lunatic. I stood up to watch and react to it. That people were saying the one thing they felt could have been better was when Aurora get, got back. That nobody was surprised that her powers got back. They're like, what? Why do people just showed up nonchalant? Sure, okay, she's yeah. When, when she, when she got her powers back, and to me, I understand that to an extent, but. For me, the touchstone moment, because again, you know, shit's going down. At least we got somebody to acknowledge it. That's what, when, when, when movies or shows don't acknowledge it at all, or just say one line, but they don't have a little moment, even if it's for a few seconds, 
that's when it kills it for me. To me, the fact that it was Gene saying, oh, Roro, and then they hug it out, and like, like look at you, look at you. That felt like that was uh, that was good for me because of how they how Ro left off and the letter she left her. To me, what's heartbreaking is that they haven't even touched upon, or maybe they did already. That like, yo, the lady you, you said goodbye to was Madeline. That's, but I have her memories. And and I remember, she's dead. And she dead now. Yes, and it's just like the processing of it, whatnot. So I feel like they did a good job. And also, again, something that shook me when I saw was Bastian was crying for her, for his mother. Yeah. Yes. He was crying for his mother, who he experimented on. And it's just like... He's also part organic or human. That's, that's... The, the levels, man. The, 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 the levels we go down this, this way. And I... For anybody, again, something that they even Bo was was mentioning is like go watch the unpilot, unofficial pilot of the old show Pride of X Men, where it was before they did the '90s style. It was very much '80s. Wolverine was Australian with an with an accent. The costumes are the exact same way. The lineups almost similar, but you're missing Colossus and other Dash and whatnot. And the fact that yo, we finally got blue team, gold team, y'all. Yes, like that gave that gave me up because I remember always being like, when the team is this big, how do they do it? Well, they split it in two. There's how? The heavy hitters. How, how, how can you do that? Boom. Like Man. on paper, that like they would have two different like our logic. We understood it, but in in the show, it's like, oh yeah, okay, we have we separate two teams: blue, you know, blue team, gold team. But in the comic, you just see the gold team adventure, and then you see the blue team mission, whatever. And and that's it separate. You're not seeing them happening at the same time concurrently, which what made sense of like people like, wait, why is there X Men? Why am I reading X Men Blue? Like X Men Go? Like what's that? It's you're educating that, but it's the point what Sam was talking about. Listen, over time, this show has been you know been. I have not seen a show this year, side maybe Shogun, which I'm still watching, um, and uh, each episode. Is feel like it's building up momentum, and then yeah. it's there, there's shock value now for this, you know, for me knowing the material. There's fan service, but this is also okay. Let's, tr- let's address the third theme of with, with Storm and Jean, right? How do you write just a basic good friendship or sisterhood relationship, but also at the same time keep it balanced where you know people can get butt hurt, be like, oh, here's the pandering, whatever. But then anything is more you feel is warm heart feeling and also earned uh relationship history like these are sisters right and also uh in the situation in like yeah you went through an entire both of them went through an entire emotional arc um throughout this entire season every day it's not like yeah you, these are omega level mutants two omega level mutant sisters right and, and and there's no like saying like oh well you know yeah we can take care of it like these guys are what no they're focusing just on their relationship as sisters and stuff what they experience and everything which is what I feel is somewhat missing in just a lot of uh, films and Marvel dealing with female characters they just don't know how to write relationships or friendships anymore it's like either I have to hate you or have some grievance about you what you did to me when I was twelve and abandoned me when you went up to space Captain Marvel you know. <laughs> This is this is good, and this is good for every like content for everybody to watch positive relationships. Like how you know, and, and then even then, also the riftness of father and son with Cyclops and Professor X. Like, come on, like you know, and, and then like even in moments where it's like you know, I already got, I already been blaming you. Don't give yourself a pity party. We got we got stuff to do. Let's you know get to it, right? And then having a father son thing with Cable. Like, go just go ahead and you know give them hell and everything. There were just so many different moments and stuff that just kind of uh, breaking. Um, also, sur- uh, survivor's guilt. You know, uh, her waking up and dreaming about Gambit, and then saying that, "Oh yeah, he's alive." Who, Remy? No, no, my knee, no. Clinging like, to that hope, yeah. right? So you're still clinging on to it, but I, like I said, th- th- this stuff and there's no contracts. There's no like. Oh, extra cameos. We gotta wait. Oh, is this person able to go to reshoots to be in this episode? No, we just put them. We can just put Hawk in there because it's animated, and they're all just one melting pot. But this is what the beauty of the Marvel universe is supposed to be. This is what while I'm watching Justice League Unlimited back when I was like six years old, like and 
random characters pop up and stuff. Yeah, yeah that's so, it. So there's one thing I did want to talk about because, you know, I mean, some people, I mean, that's played the Wolverine game. When the Wolverine game first came out, it was freaking epic. It was dark. And, of course, we've seen Wolverine with, I think, uh, Wolverine, of course, Logan, like, go and let loose. But it's rarity that we see a animated Wolverine, like, actually cutting into somebody. Like, for real, for real. And for them to show a shot like this mm-hmm. on Disney Plus mm-hmm. with a show that's been here since the 90s, Our dog, Fox kids. dog, what is happening? And I, it makes me excited for the possibilities of what Marvel could do. But I think that they're not just doing this for the sake of shock value. Jesus. This is a real moment. <laughs> this is a real freaking moment. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, yeah. it's 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 not to say that it's merited just because. It's like, no, there was no choice. And it's like, I again, when we saw the moment with Magneto with his head back, I was like, yo, what what is Professor doing to this man? And then when you, like you guys said, you get the realization what he was about to do. And we've known, Wolverine said it last time when uh, Rogue pushed Trask over, like, oops, she did what she had to do. Like, somebody, we were all thinking it. And he's about that life. He don't care. And it's like when you have that same exact thought process, you're going to get burned eventually. Like there's ramifications to everyone's actions. We're going to take that route. And it's like this is that ramification. And it's crazy to me because I don't know what that means later on. Um, this could lead to a lot. Lo- this could lead to a lot. <laughs> I love that you can't even say it. And yeah, I'm like, yep, that, yep, that, 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 that plays out. The way I think it'll play out if they go down that route, and they could connect this to something else mm-hmm. that I've been spewing about mm-hmm. for a minute. I I want to say this that like pacing wise, the combat third act I think was well so balanced because you got to handle the ground team and then uh, uh, asteroid M and how <clears throat> Gene is being put through the ringer. Um, if anybody's watching this, I don't recall in the animated series when. Gene and and Sinister finally got to duke it out after all the shit he's put her through. Right. She finally got to go and give him a few rounds, and then how her non, but so adopted son son, if you will, how she has to not hold him off because he's under his control. Um, it's just mind bending to me. Whoa, and- hold on, I just realized something. I was trying to figure out why. I I feel like I've seen this costume on Rogue before. And this was the costume. That's when her, yes, her, her, that's when she was a villain, yeah. When she turned. Yes. She heel turned. What? That is a freaking mm-hmm. set, dog. That is amazing. Yeah. Shoot, that might happen in live action. I hope it does. But, um, sorry. Just no, it's all good. Um, I hope next week that it ends and it ends in a way where, like, if that was the last episode, then I was satisfied with being the last episode obviously so already open-ended yeah i because i like breadcrumbs but i don't like all but ended stuff all the way i i like when it's 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 beginning middle end and if we do do another story there's 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 foundation to be to go about and whatnot um again i don't want to get into too much of logan but if they go down the route they i think they're gonna go there's there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bunch we can go down that route with just him, just him, not the whole team, just him. Um, so I hope next week there's a concluding factor that anybody could watch and be like, wow, that was one hell of a season of television and 10 great episodes that as a whole was perfect. But there's stuff there that if, if we if they do, if somebody does want to give them the money, which they will, if someone already cleared it, which they have. We can go and do more stories onwards and whatnot. But wait, um, I thought that Bo had written two seasons already. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's what I'm saying. That's the, uh, yeah. So that's what I'm saying that they've already they've already said they're going forward with more stuff. Now, because still stuff is still uptight about what went down in in Toontown, it's gonna say what if he's gonna if they're who knows if they're going to bring him back or not, if where they're going to go afterwards. So that's why I'm saying that hopefully this season as a whole concludes where it's tight. And yet if they, if when we do get season two, where the breadcrumbs lead on afterwards, because again, as of now, he ain't coming back after season two, but 
depending on on what the reasons were, he was he was let go. Why they parted ways? Fans have fans have been demanding since episode five or since three. Bring it back, bring it back. Well, but it's also like you got to throw in the, the thing of like what went down. Well, I heard they last time. I remember, I remember they fired James Gunn, and you know, look what. I... <laughs> and now he's running an entire. You literally were saying much. something I was not going to actually say, but I was going to type. But... I'm gonna say it because like. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. <laughs> but we I don't know. know. We know. We know like, why they let James Gunn go. Because listen, y'all are by. Listen, I'm not even say that. Y'all just y'all hypocritical. Y'all hypocritical. Not you guys. I'm talking about the industry. I'm talking about the industry head. When they don't, you get one second or season of controversy only for y'all to be like, you know what? We smell money. Forget y'all. You know, the, mo- <laughs> the money sounds bigger than the actual cries of Twitter. And then and if we read the comment sections, you you kind of you kind of want us to actually do this. So we're just gonna bring this dude back. But we won't reveal it until after season two to give y'all anticipation. You know, that's what's gonna happen. That's what's and, gonna happen. And from what I've seen, and folks you can go online and find the, the, the comment or the, the the affirmation. Was it because the OF and said person was like, No, I closed that down a while back. And that's just like, well, working condition again. Everybody, I believe in forgiveness. I believe in reconciliation. You know, <laughs> um, I believe we're all called to forgive, but I also believe reconcile is choice. Now, two parties have a choice to reconcile, but one of them really are in the position where they maybe want to reconcile in their favor. You know, you know, because um, listen, I'm just saying this. We're hearing also stuff about live action connectivity and everything like that, but. The big thing you keep hearing from this show is listen, it's a shame because you don't know if they will ever do this, get this good live action, even though it's under the same umbrella. We, you know, it's almost sound too good to be true. Like, oh, they, they want to get this good. We don't know. And it'd probably be many years until maybe about four years, five years ago, depending, probably four, that we'll ever get something live action that might be this good. I pray. I I'm pray. just saying. And he's teased it. Sam teased it that there is an end way with something coming very soon that they can go and start connecting stuff that maybe the past few years haven't been able to do all the way. All I'm going to say this, like a prayer. That's all I'm going to say. Listen. So (laughs) I'm going to say this about... Say it, say it, Sam. Say it. Yes. I know what you're talking about. Do it. No, I'm going to know what I'm going to not do. I'm going to say this about um, the mayo. Oh, okay. He, I don't know the circumstance of the situation, um, but I do know at the time of his firing, Disney's not trying to have any kind of liabilities or loose threads. And at that time, they had a lot. They had a lot of really intense loose threads. Um, so that may have been a catalyst to why they did that. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, all we can do is see, because they could they could easily continue on and just have him as a writing credit, writing, written credit, but not creator. Um, so there's different ways that they can kind of make it work. Um, I didn't want to bring up the James Gunn situation, but that was a lot. I mean, it's stuff that happened in his past. Um, and it, it went to the front end and they had to kind of take action. So I, I don't know. Um, I just know what I've seen this man do with this show has been phenomenal. And I can't, regardless of what he's done or what he's maliciously done. I mean, he's done a great job with this show. That's that's what I want to acknowledge. More I, I, I'm, I'm so happy you said that because that's the one thing I can say that for right now, all I can say is objectively <clears throat> fucking writing's on par. Fucking writing is next level. Yeah. That's what I can say. And I also can say this. He's not the only one who's written for this show. Yeah. He's yeah. he's he's oh, he's the head exactly. coach. Exactly. He's Pat yes. Riley. He's he's Phil Jackson, all that stuff. But like he, Charlie Feldman, um, the other writers who helped uh, the, the other directors, uh Jake Costareño, I believe, who's also the, the supervising director and producer. Like I also hope they get their shout outs because that's what I've been trying to do the best these past few weeks. Just be like, when I can, I'll say, Bill, writing is good. Thank you. But also shouting them out as well. Yeah. That they get the recognition as well. And that hopefully yeah. they they also come back. Yeah. For season two. I, think, I think there's a there's a misconception because I th- I've always kept going back to the She Hulk writers room scene and Disney Plus, how like, 
yeah, we can go on that show, but it was a collective body of people that kind of led to that product being what it was, right? And the same thing goes for this. I think we always like to say, oh, something that uh, controversy that we like to drive into, depart from a show that we're liking, and you're like, oh, then it's not going to be – like, we can't just enjoy the show we have because, like, well, it's not going to be good in season two because he's gone, right? Like, no. There's collective people part of this, and even the interviews and stuff like that. They're all clear on the mindset of what X Men stands for, and even all the haters, all that stuff are silent. Are silent. Even then, some folks who you know would jump on the bandwagon, be like, um, "Yes, yeah, so this this show good, but uh, yeah, no." <laughs> this show, I feel like, is it's been something we've been waiting for for Marvel Studios to as collectively to bring us back as a fan base to to be just join collectively and be happy about of all folk, you know, of everybody. And even to a point we prove people wrong when we have a good product or prove it when we, uh, when we support the show and stuff like that. But, um, and you, what, did I say something wrong, sir? No, no, no. He found something. So I saw something. I didn't realize <laughs> that bro wrote was made one of the main story editors and executive story editors for the originals, which is one of my favorite shows. And then Dizzy, I know you're a League of Legends fan. He wrote two different shorts, which was League of Legends Absolution and Before Dawn. So he was the person behind talent, both bro. of those as well. I He's written for that. Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Castlevania. So yeah, I, right. That's crazy. That's crazy. Sorry. Just ran. Nah. No, it's okay. Yeah, just, just anyway, um, pay your riders. Let's not get into another strike so we can get delayed and all that stuff. No, no, pay them. Yeah, y'all, people, the, some people who, who are malicious against the rider strike, like, oh, well, if, if only they wrote good stories, then they can get paid. Well, no, 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 no. Good output. Give No, give them what they deserve. All of them. Give them that residuals. We're fucking yeah, scrolling. I'm ready for the to- And I'm ready for the toys. I'm ready for oh, the hot yeah. toys to come out for this and stuff. Yes. Yes. The steel books, whatever. Oh, no. they Regardless of what they do, if they get a second season or if they don't, they need to make sure they market this thing all the way up. They need to have every single episode breakdowns. They need to have, like, storyboards. Like, I would love, like, an episode breakdown for each episode. If they, if they were really smart, Commentary. I would have had like a podcast after what? each episode for just, just like HBO. Oh, yeah, yes. like, why, like Talking Dead. Yes, yeah. this is one of those shows the that mutants. they maybe they just didn't know it was gonna hit like it did. But yeah. if they would have known, they could have ran with this. But I digress. What are, What is our final thoughts on this episode? Rating all that. Um, so we can close. Oh, definite out. A for me. Solid banger. Can't wait for the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Ronan, what's your... it's fucking fly around here. Um, I, I, it is um, this fucking show, man. The, it's it's a it's an A. I think the fact that I feel I haven't had as much fun covering something, talking about something, engaging it, uh, to promoting it as best as I can as a fan. It says a lot to to the show and also this episode that I've already been telling folks, yo, stay off Twitter, stay off online, experience as much as you can and whatnot. Um, yeah, block messenger. I, I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I got a block messenger who I wake I feel, up. So we got some folks who want to just talk about stuff like, hey, come on. I feel oh, so yeah. bad because I'm promoting my reaction and Sam was like, I'm going to stay off stuff because people's already leaking stuff. I'm like, I get it. I'm like, do your thing, man. Um, yes, folks, go watch it. And I think next week it's going to be a hell of a ride. And I can't wait to have uh, a roundtable, if you will, discussing this thing as a whole. Because there's a lot to unpack. A lot to, to go back and see where stuff was being laid up. So A+, plus, a, 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 a solid A for me. Phenomenal. Mike, closing thoughts and rating? Um, I'm going to give a rating A for, uh, a, a for Airbnb. Um, I'm gonna go uh, make my bookings right now. Um, I, I'll probably plan that for my anniversary or something like that. Hey, we're gonna yep. see the mansion. Yes, you always want a mansion, sweetheart. I got one for you. Let's go. You know, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, this shows off the freaking chain, all the merchandise, all that stuff. Man, 
back in the 90s, back when it all started, when greatness was born. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, for me, I don't really have any negatives on this, man. This is A plus for me. I, I, I know this really controversial to say A plus, A plus, A plus, but I don't have I any negatives with this. I don't have any negatives at all with this. And what it makes me do is really enticed to see what they could do with something else, like maybe Spider Man. Like, bring, Bro, my man, bring my man John Sipper back. Like, take take me to another place. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. But don't. I digress. I'm like, not go down that rabbit hole. Um, so, yeah, this was amazing for me. I love this episode. So, uh, where can everybody find your content? Busy. Busy Brown everywhere. Busy reactions on Instagram and um, Team JVS. You can find reviews. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Mike, where can everybody find your content? Uh, you can find me on YouTube and on Instagram at Jedi Mike Seven, and on here on Team JBS. Yes, sir. And last but not least, Ronan Unchained. You can find me at Ronan Unchained on YouTube on most of all socials. I uh, got a lot of reactions and a lot of iron in the fire for y'all. The next few months, there's gonna be uh, a lot of stuff to to hang out with. And oh, he's yeah. on TikTok now, guys. Go <laughs> check out his TikTok. Yeah. I got 24 yeah. hours before it is. <laughs> For as long as it stays. For as long as it shall stand, go and visit his TikTok. You got but, 24 uh... hours. <laughs> But yeah, you guys, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell button, go to the description bar below, and check out these guys' amazing channel and content. Uh, we will be back next week. I, I'm not going to lie, guys. I may actually take a nap, and I might try to stay up till 3 o'clock. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I that This is the finale, and I may actually actually feel so busy. <laughs> busy <in my> <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm probably going to get my kids down and actually go to bed and legit stay up to do They gave this look like, what the fuck did you just say? I know. I, I just, I feel like <laughs> it's the last episode, bro. Oh, no. I can't have any craziness in between that time. Like, I, I'll, I'll delete Messenger. I try to delete Twitter, but I swear, dude, if something crazy breaks the internet, there's no way I'm going to avoid it. So I'm debating, like, legit doing that 3 o'clock. So I'm just letting y'all know. It's debating. I haven't clarified. We're going to go. For busy hurts me. We're going to go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace, people. We're out. Filing out the top of the I'm a city skyline. 50 mile radius on the timeline. Ain't nothing on my mind.